Hey, Tim Sykes here, and I just got to go over a lot of recently asked questions. Um, I should mention that the sale is ending. I'm not even going to show you the sales page anymore for all the sales in the DVDs and newsletters. I'll post a link included in this video lesson, but aside from that, the sale is done. Uh, our Thanksgiving sale, I extended it several times, but now, listen, you either want to learn or you don't. I'm not going to force you. I'm so proud of several students though, like Eric, he just passed, or he's getting close to passing 100,000 in profits in his first year. He never thought it would be possible. Well, guess what? Hard work, dedication, perseverance, dreaming big, focusing on learning and improving your strategies, it pays off over time. And then also my student Alex is up 140,000. Um, but right now I wanna talk about GLBS. So. This is a very interesting uh, trade here that I did, and I was shorting this in the sixes. Uh, I wish I, I had good Wi-Fi where I could have made a video lesson right when this was happening. Um, but, you know, I've been traveling, I've been sick, so it is what it is. The part of the confusion is that I, I say don't short, you know, first green days on these supernovas. Uh, you know, you never know how far they're going to go. You, you try and wait for, you know, a, a first red day, like HTBX, you know, this was the first red day and it was actually, this one was the first red day and it was a nice little morning panic on the first red day and then actually a big drop, but that was due to news. The, this little morning panic was predictable. Predicting big, bad news is not. Um, so with GLBS, why was I trying to short this here in the sixes? And this is where the intricacies and subtleties of trading come in, okay? Uh, if you've watched my DVDs, uh, specifically uh, Tim Raw and Tim Tactics, I talk about how sometimes when you want to short a stock that everybody else wants to short, you're going to have to risk a little pain. You're going to have to actually try and short before the first red day because when the first red day happens, there won't be any shares to short. This is what makes shorting very difficult. Uh, lately, also, you have to be careful because you never know how far these shipping stocks can go, as some short sellers learned the very hard way on DRYS when it went from the single digits up to 100 bucks in just a few days. So if you short too early just to reserve shares to short, you're going to get crushed. Never, under no circumstances, do you ignore rule number one about cutting losses quickly. I don't want you shorting like I saw several people in several other chat rooms in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and you're risking losing, you know, when it goes to the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. I mean, you're down more than 100% on your position, okay? This is the danger with shorting. If you go long a stock and it goes to zero, okay, you lose all your money. But if you short a stock, let's say 1,000 shares at 20, and it goes to 80, you haven't just lost, you know, your 20,000. You're down $60,000, and if it goes to 100 and you're short at 20, you're down 80,000 bucks. So you cannot just let your shorts run. Even though this did come down eventually, shorts got a little lucky here. There were actually going to be buy-ins when the stock got halted right here at the market open. It never opened. Uh, it got halted pre-market. So if there had been those broker buy-ins, guess what? You know, People would have been losing 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, $80 a share. And that is just insane when you're shorting a 10, 20, 30, $40 stock. You cannot risk that. That's how you blow up. And this is part of the problem with other chat rooms and other newsletters where several of these big traders have blown up. It doesn't matter how well you do if you blow up. And I am very proud of the fact that none of my top students have truly blown up. You know, we've had losses. I've had losses too. But... The way that I teach is a little more cowardly. And some people rip on that, but I'm a safety first kind of guy when you trade these kinds of stocks. Now, did I know that this stock was going to go to 100? No. But when it was in the 30s and 40s, I was warning not to short it. I said this could go to the 50s, 60s, and 70s. It's time stamped, and you have to be extra careful. So, with that in mind, GLBS, you know, and GLBS, by the way, went crazy too from the low single digits to the 20s back here. So why am I shorting this here in the sixes? You know, aren't I scared? And I want to address this, even though this was a few days ago, I want to do a video because this is important. So 
part of the reason why I was shorting, and first of all, I wasn't just shorting like, oh my God, this is definitely going to drop. I was shorting, I was trying to short a very small amount. I was trying to short 500 shares. So 500 shares in the sixes when I was trying would be $3,000, roughly 3% of the account that I'm trading with at Interactive Brokers. So I'm, it's not like I'm going all in. With trading, you have to think about position sizing. You know, shorting 100 shares, who cares if it's a very small percentage of your account and if you have a plan. Now, I would not just short 500 shares for the hell of it, but my whole goal was, okay, if I could find shares to short, and those of you who are in the chat room that day know that I couldn't even find shares to short in the sixes. Uh, but if I could have, my goal was to short 500, let's say it's 640. If it kept going, maybe short another 500 in the low sevens, get my average to seven-ish and cover from probably a dollar a share to six. If I shorted at 640 when I was trying and I found the 500 shares to short, and let's say it came down to six, I would cover for my 40 cent a share profit. So I thought that this run up was unsustainable. Why? This is a classic number six pattern from my penny stocking framework DVD. I know this is not a blatant pump, but the same patterns reemerge over and over and over again. So I would not short into this mania, but after the stock has already dropped from the 22s down to the threes, guess what? There's a lot of bag holders. There's a lot of people who are long this whole way and they're gonna sell into every single spike. And this, for three straight days, could not go up more than like 30 cents a share. If it went up 30 cents a share, it would drop like 20 cents a share. If it went up 50 cents a share in a few minutes, it would drop and it would lose like half or all of those little gains. So this is a kind of dead in the water stock. When it goes up here, $3 a share in 20 minutes, I tweeted this, I said, you gotta have some perspective. You know, this is a little insane. And I'm not saying that it's not going to go to $20 eventually, but I think that this $3 a share rise is too fast. And I think that we're going to get, uh, excuse me, I'm making too many video lessons. I can't stop. Um, I thought that we were going to get some consolidation. And it turns out we did. And, and guess what? The stock went right back. But there was still that consolidation point. So this is what I want to talk about. If you have people, I mean, this was my trade. I actually... Could not get short uh, in the sixes. I actually got short at 724. Thank you, Interactive Brokers. Um, and I covered for, for roughly a dollar a share, and I made 14% of my money. Very small trade, but made, you know, 500 bucks. You have people who will look at this and they'll say, oh, you should never have done that. I went in with a plan. I've seen these stocks before. If, let's say, I shorted at 640 and then added to my position that my average was at seven, and my whole goal is to make a dollar a share. If it goes to 750, I'm out. I cut my losses. If I'm trying to make a dollar a share, I'm not gonna risk losing more than 50 cents. I would not just keep shorting 500, 500, 500 on the way up. That is a strategy bound to fail, as proven by several other chat rooms, newsletters, and gurus, and people that have blown up and they've lost 50, 75, 100, 150% of their money. And guess what? That's why they're not on Profitly. They don't show all their trades. They're embarrassed. They're ashamed. And they should be. You need to trade these stocks extra safe if you're shorting. So props to those of you who shorted this. You know, Interactive Brokers had some shares. I think a few other brokers did too. But you got to cut losses quickly. Okay? If you want to hate me, if you want to say I'm a coward, fine. I don't mind. I am a coward. And I will always cut losses quickly. But that said, this was a good trade. Interactive Brokers helped me by giving me actually a better entry than I planned for. They couldn't find me any shares to short in the sixes, but I'll gladly take the shares to short in the sevens. And I was right about the consolidation. That said, there was also some money to be made because it actually got halted and it dropped after the halt. So sometimes you get a little lucky. You can't predict intraday halts, but I've been involved with short selling some sketchy companies before. And guess what? Every now and then you get a halt if you're on the right track. Sometimes you go long and you get a halt and that sucks. But if you short these sketchy companies that are up on no news after they've already spiked and crashed, I'm not just saying short randomly, remember that. There's, there's subtleties here, so I can't put this all in a tweet. So some people are gonna try and twist my words around. This is why I have to do these 15, 20 minute video lessons to explain all the ins and outs where you can be wrong about a stock but cutting losses quickly it's okay, and that makes the trade okay. The good news is that there's also a big time 
potential profit here where some of you guys, you don't have to trade cowardly. Just because I trade cowardly does not mean that you have to. And this is the beauty of kind of my evolution as a teacher where I don't tell you to do exactly what I do. I try and show you the patterns and the rules and show you what I'm doing, especially because I'm you know trading on crappy Wi-Fi from freaking Laos. So I'm not in the best predicament to trade big. But at the same time, you can trade big. You're not necessarily in Laos. You don't necessarily have bad Wi-Fi. And several of you guys do. And this is what really pisses my critics off because some people are like, Tim only made a dollar a share. Why is he taking credit when a student makes more? Because I'm showing patterns and I'm showing you the possibilities. You can trade cowardly. You can trade aggressively. But I hope to show you all different angles. And whatever works for you, that's fine. In the beginning of my teaching journey, I was like, there's only one way. And I was very narrow-minded, like many other traders. Well, guess what? Over the years, I've opened up. And I recognize that there are multiple ways, long and short, to make money on stocks like this. So even though I made a dollar a share, I'm just as proud of my student, Stephen, who's a challenge student. And he made $25,000 plus. And he still has some shares uh, on the table, but he was shorting it, uh, you know, at roughly uh, 640, where, where actually I wanted to short, and he was covering it, you know, uh, in the threes, and that's freaking fantastic. Also, Jay, awesome trade right here. You bought it and you sold it, and you made, you know, a few hundred bucks. That's fine too. I'm not telling you that you have to short it, just be careful. Will, I love this. He shorted it at 570, covered it at 288. Biggest win of the year. You're a great mentor. Oh, thank you, Will. I appreciate that. But I'm not necessarily this great mentor. I'm just sharing with you guys different patterns, different students, different possibilities so that you can understand all the angles. And then you choose what's best for you. I will go on record as saying I think it's the height of all idiocy to short into this kind of run-up and risk losing more than your entire position. But if you're already a millionaire and you know, you're, you're, you, you're down, I don't know, you have a $20,000 position and you're down, you know, 40 grand and you already have like 3 million in the bank. It's not the end of the world, you know, but I still have to warn you guys because most of you guys are not millionaires. Most of you guys cannot afford to lose all of your account or a good size of your account or more than your account. And that will make short selling look bad. That makes me look bad. That makes you look bad. And that cuts your education short. And I cannot allow that to happen. So I will be strict about cutting losses quickly. I will not be so strict as to say, oh, some people can buy it. Some people can short it. Some people can go aggressive. I don't care. Okay. But just do me a favor and respect the cut losses quickly. Because I've seen too many people blow up. And I don't want that. So Will, good job. Biggest win of the year for you. Uh, Sergey. Awesome job, made over six grand, and he says, thanks, Tim Sykes, and his chat room. Uh, and the chat room is great. Thank you to you guys. I mean, we have over a 1,000 traders now in the chat room every single day, and it's pretty freaking awesome. So I appreciate all of you guys helping other people too. Try and share good lessons and rules. We're all trying to help each other. We're not trading with each other. That's very dangerous. I don't believe in like trading partners and that bullshit. I think you should be self-sufficient. But I do think that having a thousand pairs of eyes looking at different patterns and stocks and sharing rules, that is beneficial. But I still want you to make your own trades. I don't want you ever, ever following anybody else, their picks, their alerts, their tips, none of that. Be self-sufficient. Uh, here's William or Will M. Uh, you know, he made money on the long side. Good job. Uh, Irvin made money on the long side, made a dollar a share. I don't discriminate. If you make a dollar a share on the upside or a dollar a share on the downside, either way, that's good. So I want to be very clear with this. And that's specifically why I'm making this video, because there is not just one right way. And it doesn't matter what your name is. It doesn't matter what your country, whatever you're in, what your situation is in. There's multiple ways to profit. But please cut losses quickly. If the stock is going against you and you're, you think that it might be a big loss, just trade scared. Okay, and if you exit too soon and you take a small loss and then the stock swings back and you could have had a profit, don't regret it because the sooner you learn to cut losses quickly, that's one of these key good habits that's going to serve you for the rest of your life. So any profit that you could have made does not matter. 
developing good habits should be first and foremost in your mind when you're beginning. Even if, even while you you keep trading, even me, I'm trying to make good trades. I'm trying to to keep doing my good habits. So if you make fifty cents, if you make a dollar a share, if you make less, if you lose less, focus on learning and recognize that there are multiple angles. But also recognize that if you're on the right track, you know on GLBS here, shorting this into this spike, and and I actually might reshort this because it looks like it's having trouble here in the mid sevens. Sometimes you get rewarded with a halt. And that's not the end of the world. You know, some of my biggest wins have been, you know, a little helped by luck. Luck never hurts. Sometimes you get unlucky too. So it's, you, you can't plan for luck. You can't control that. What you can plan is cutting losses quickly and, you know, practicing good habits. And I'm proud of you back here. You know, this was, this was a really tough time for me. I mean, trading from Laos, trading from Asia, I've done but trading from really bad Wi-Fi and working on charity work all day, it's been a rough few weeks for me. You know, normally when I go to Asia, like I'm, I'm doing it luxury style. I go, I work, I sleep, I go to some like amazing restaurants. Maybe I do like one or two activities like a, every day or every other day just to get a taste of the local stuff. But with this charity, I mean, I'm here with Pencils of Promise and they pack your day full. I mean, we're visiting four, five, six schools a day. We're visiting teachers. We're visiting local administrators. We're visiting local government. So this charity trip is a little different than my normal trips, just so that you understand. I'm not making excuses. I'm still profitable over the past few weeks, but I'm definitely not in a position uh, to necessarily bet big, and I'm definitely not in a position to say, oh, let me just you know, trade one of these crazy volatile stocks because the Wi-Fi, frankly, goes down every 20, 30 minutes here in Laos just for a few seconds. But if you're in a crazy volatile play like this, you know, those few seconds or few minutes can really hurt you. So if you are in a situation, whether you're in Laos like I am or whether you're at work or in school, you know, something where you, you don't have like the perfect trading environment, recognize that. Don't feel like you're making excuses. Don't feel like you're less of a man or woman or less of a trader. You know, I see so much bullshit out there. It pisses me off. Recognize your situation. Adapt to it. Try and take a responsible position. Even if you do have a perfect Wi-Fi setup in your office, and let's say the stock is just going against you, recognize that and practice the good habit of cutting losses quickly. But back here, I mean, this was... This spike was happening like literally at like 1, 2 in the morning in Laos and, and my Wi-Fi was going in and out and my sanity was going in and out and I wasn't really even touching it. But a lot of you saw this former breakout here in the mid sixes and you were long in the sixes, sevens, eights and you sold in the nines, tens, elevens, twelves. Some of you even sold in the thirteens, fourteens, fifteens, sixteens, twenties. And that is fantastic because despite all the naysayers of penny stocks and despite all these you know, fucked up short sellers on social media were like, oh, this company is junk. It should go to zero. Guess what? This is a perfect fucking breakout. And congratulations to several of you who bought this breakout and you made 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100%, 200% on your money. Short sellers will never have that. So that's why they're bitter. They can research all day long. They can say a company is trash all day long. They're never going to have a 200% profit. The maximum you can make on shorting is 100%. And the maximum you can lose on shorting is infinite. So short selling by definition is riskier if you allow it to be. If you don't cut your losses quickly. If you just keep trying to say, oh, this company is crap. The fundamentals don't support this price. These stocks don't move based on fundamentals, dumb fuckers. Okay? GLBS did not spike from 6 to 22 because everyone thought the fundamentals were so good. It spiked because it was a perfect technical breakout. It had the momentum. It had the volume. And because it had so many early shorts, just like on DRYS, it was a short squeeze. During short squeezes, fundamentals don't matter. Eventually they do for long-term investing and when the stock comes down eventually. But don't confuse fundamentals and technicals right away. Okay, don't just short a stock like DRYS or GLBS and say, oh, this company will eventually go bankrupt. Let me just short everything here at 29 and you risk losing 
you know, 80 bucks a share. And eventually you're right. But again, what if you had gotten bought in? What if you have to cut losses? Sometimes it's not up to you. Sometimes it's the broker. So I, I see so much misinformation out there. It pisses me off. You can short sell these. You can trade these stocks. But just do it safely. There's no point in blowing up like too many wannabe experts have. And, you know, again, don't trust anybody, okay? Don't follow tips from anybody. Don't follow alerts from anybody. All I'm trying to do is get you to see what's possible so that you can be like Irvin and make a dollar a share or Willem and make 75 cents a share or Sergey and make 6,000 or Steven and make 25,000. These people have their shit together. And hopefully, if they're watching this video lesson too, like they should be, they're not gonna take these gains for granted. Be very grateful for every single trade, every single play. Be grateful if you find shares to short. I was very grateful to Interactive Brokers for finding me shares to short of GLBS, okay? And if there's not a great play, you don't need to trade. A lot of you guys are hitting me up like, Tim, I just don't see the patterns. Because you're looking too hard. You're looking everywhere. You're looking at thousands of stocks. You're like, no, 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 no. Oh, what am I doing wrong? But look at Steven. He's trading two stocks. And both of these stocks fit the pattern. Okay, HTBX just had its first down day the other day. It was a perfect overnight short morning panic the next day. And also, you know, it too got halted after some, some really bad news. And then it crashed 60 70%. So... People who were more aggressive actually got rewarded on HTBX. So sometimes you can be aggressive, sometimes you can be passive. There's no one right way. And you have to judge every situation, every stock, including your own personal predicament and schedule. It doesn't matter if the stock is the perfect setup if you can't trade, if you have no Wi-Fi for the day, if you're on like a camping trip, or if you have to work all day. You must consider all of these different variables. This is what my trader checklist guide is all about. That's why personal schedule matters and risk matters and your ability to cut losses quickly. If a stock moves too fast, it doesn't matter if your plan is to cut losses quickly and the stock moves so fast, what's your backup plan? If the stock gets away from your stop loss, your mental stop loss, are you prepared to change that and then cut losses? You fucking better be. Don't be a deer in headlights and just freeze and say, oh, the stock just blew through my stop loss. I guess I have no plan now, so I'll just sit and wait. Don't you do that. You know, if you look at like NFL quarterbacks, you know, they have multiple receivers on different plays and they look at their different targets and they see, you know, oh, here, this receiver is covered. This receiver isn't covered. Let me go to my second choice who's not covered, you know, and they look at different options and they try and choose the best one. Trading is no different, okay? If you're trying to go for a home run and for whatever reason the stock isn't acting right, you can exit. You don't have to wait for a loss to exit. You know, trading isn't just like, oh, let me wait for my goals to get hit or my loss, my stop loss to get hit. You know, which way? There's lots of different shades in between, okay? And you can do a whole bunch of different stuff. So just understand that. That's part of the beauty of trading. You can have multiple plans. You, you can change your plans mid-trade. You can react to the price action. This is not like Vegas where you put your money on red or black and they spin the wheel and then you know you can't take your money off because you're either going to double your money or you're going to lose all your money. Trading, you can cut losses. You can exit very quickly and you can learn and you can live another day. Uh, or if you're winning, you know, you can take profits or you can take partial profits. If you're not feeling comfortable, if, if the stock is doing what you want, but let's say you're not feeling good that day and you want to go to sleep. So exit half the position and play it safe. You know, it, there's so many different ways to slice and dice this. I just want you to try and have, you know, the right mindset. And I know that's tough because there's a lot of narrow mindedness out there. There's a lot of BS out there, but as I show more and more students who are profiting in various ways with different account sizes from all over the world, long and short, holding for a few hours or minutes or days, you start to see the potential and you start to see the possibilities. And you have to choose what patterns and strategies work best for you and what you're most comfortable with. So 
the student of the day the other day, by the way, was was my student Stephen, and you know he was in the challenge chat room. He's like, I just made twenty five thousand, and I was like, prove it, show me your screenshot, and he did. So I love that about Steven. He's had several big wins too. Anyways, I'm going to go take a nap, but I just wanted to make a video lesson because this is so key. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the chat room.